This episode is sponsored by Bow Lake, the most beautiful paddle boards in the world. Visit bowlake.com and learn more. That's B E A U lake.com. Bow is French for beautiful. B E A U lake.com. You're listening to The Luxury Item, the podcast on the business of luxury and the people and companies that are shaping the future of the luxury industry. Here's your host, Scott Kerr. This past September at the Monaco Yacht Show, the biggest names in the international luxury yachting sector gathered to witness the extraordinary sight of some of the largest and most expensive superyachts in the world. The superyacht crowd were out in force too, a chance for the ultra-wealthy buyers to go shopping for an opulent new vessel to impress, strengthen contracts, broker deals, and bond with family and friends. Superyacht sales soared during the pandemic, primarily driven by the heightened demand for solitary recreation and the biggest surge in billionaire wealth since records began. Today, the ultra-affluent are taking to the waves like never before as the market for superyachts continues to enjoy a post-pandemic tailwind. Here to talk about the state of the superyacht market and the ultra-high net worth individuals buying them is my guest on the luxury item, Rafael Solo, CEO of IYC, International Yacht Company. IYC is one of the world's largest superyacht brokerages specializing in the sale and charter of luxury yachts and superyachts. Raphael is an accomplished chief executive officer with over 25 years experience in the private wealth and maritime sectors and has a well-earned reputation for delivering results through operations management and team development. He joined IYC as CEO at the end of 2022, coming from Fraser Yachts, where he also held the position of CEO. Welcome to the luxury item, Raphael. Hey, good afternoon, Scott. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining me. So I think the Palm Beach International Boat Show just recently ended, um, and I know uh, IYC had a big presence there. So how did it go? Oh, well, yes, we had a very, very strong presence. We had over 15 yachts on display, a a very nice uh, presence, some events, and, you know, the nine yachts, what you do in a boat show, right? Yeah. Uh, The show was relatively busy. Unfortunately, the weather played us around, and uh, we had some rain, some wind, uh, to a point that uh, in the middle of the night, I was like, oh, hopefully my stand is still up when I wake up in the morning, you know? (laughs) So that was not a very good... uh, uh, experience uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, stress and the yeah, weather, but right. overall, I think the beauty of the show in Palm Beach, uh, and and I really like that show. Um, you really see uh, clients walking the docks and uh, being relaxed and taking the time to see the boat, and 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 more than often on their own, which is a uh, which is very rare. You know, obviously, uh, if you compare with the other shows in the industry, such as Monaco, uh, to find. Uh, a potential customer walking the dog on his or her own, it's very rare. They are surrounded yeah. by brokers, you know? So right, right. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a good show. In regards to the outcome, we, we definitely got some good visits. I would say it was a bit slower than usual. Uh, I, I think the weather definitely played its toll here, but uh, at least, you know, what happened when the weather is not in our favor, you're sure of one thing, whoever comes is very interested. So that was uh, that was overall uh, positive. We have some activity going on some few boats and, uh, you know, you only see the quality of a show uh, with the number of boats you manage to sell. So fingers crossed. So, and hopefully when we next talk, uh, Scott, I'll be able to tell you, look, that was great. We sold many boats. <laughs> uh, what was the overall mood? The mood was good. I mean, the mood is always very good in a boat show, I have to admit. Yeah. Um, What's the However, sad about? you know, <laughs> exactly, you know, beautiful boats, atmosphere, music, drinks. I mean, nothing to be sad about. You're very right. However, you could see that, um, and the talk of the dogs was, you know, is the market going strong? Is the market slowing down? How is everything going? Uh, so, you know, there was a bit of a, especially amongst exhibitors. Okay, right. uh, how it's going to turn out? Obviously, the show of Palm Beach was the real first test of the season of the year. I mean, Miami was earlier, but Miami is it's not really captivating that audience. So that number of exhibitors for the uh, segment markets we are in, uh, which is the super yacht market. So the real test is really Palm Beach. And uh, Palm Beach was... Uh, 
It's to be seen. Look, you know, I've been go going through very, very busy boat shows, a lot of people, and then you end up selling nothing. And to the contrary, I've had very slow boat show where you end up selling all your boats. So uh, future will tell. So you've been in your role as CEO of IYC for a little over two years now, moving over as CEO from another super yacht powerhouse, Fraser. What was your main strategic focus when you joined IYC? So look, um, yeah, I joined the IOS about 14, 15 months ago, and um, obviously the industry just uh, is coming out of very, very strong years uh, where we've had uh, exceptional uh, sales records, charter records. Um, IOS is a company which is known, but not that super well known. And uh, one of the um, main um, strategic uh, pillar which I wanted to put forward was obviously communication, mm -hmm. communication and marketing to to make sure IYC is and is a very strong name a brand which is uh, doing very well uh, in our in our um, industry, and therefore ensure that the message is relayed. And obviously, we also um, are today the leader in the charter management with over 160 ads. So I wanted to make sure we keep on growing that division. We also are revamping uh, our yacht management division, which is a very strong cross-selling um, division within the yachting industry in the brokerage house, because not only it does allow you to service your existing clients, but if you are good at what you do, it also allows you to welcome new customers who in turn could become clients for the other division. So we put the emphasis on uh, communication, um, our charter division obviously keep going strong with the sales and uh, the expansion and development of the um, of the yacht management division. We also look also at the footprint. We have a roadmap on where should we be. Uh, do we need to open offices in emerging markets such as the UAE, um, or do we look at Asia? So all of this is under review. We opened Dubai here recently. And we also uh, want to make sure that we are keep on uh, reinforcing our presence wherever we are today, especially in America, where uh, we also open California at the end of uh, 2022. Mm -hmm. So we have different uh, uh, pillars in our development and strategy going forward. Uh, one being communication, two being uh, reinforcing our existing division, third, uh, expand and develop uh, new divisions. And last but not least, um, do a strong effort in recruitment and human resources to also uh, support the existing team, but also find new talents uh, where we know uh, our industry is extremely uh, competitive and therefore bringing new talents whom we can develop for the future is also a, a big item on our to-do list. And IYC's core revenue streams come from the charter business where vacationers can rent any size yacht they want in the world. And you also sell new and used yachts so does charter or sales drive most of your business? Look, it really depends. Obviously, the bigger tickets are in sales. Uh, we, simply because the assets are of, of a different price tag. But uh, while sales is also very, is always very complicated or challenging to predict when you run your, uh, your yearly budgets, um, they are... This is a division whereby you can you can really achieve a, a strong revenue. However, it is challenging, and in a never moving and a fluctuating market, it's not a it's not a sure thing every year. Right. World charter, if you if you grow your fleet and you have enough um, good uh, yachts available for charter, it is something which is consistent, and we've been growing that division consistently for the last six seven years. So now we have a strong fleet. So Year on year, we've been growing that revenue stream and we keep on growing that revenue stream. So I would say uh, whilst sales is a strong item, charter management and charter overall remains a permanent, consistent flux of revenue. Uh, and in a slower year, which may be the case in 2024, uh, I can already pretty much see and say that charter management is likely to uh, overtake our uh, net revenue uh, over sales. What about the marina sector? It's also been benefiting from people turning to boating since the pandemic. Marina acquisitions by large super yacht retailers have been common in recent years with the goal of expanding into the super yacht services segment. Is IYC interested in moving into the marina space? 
Well, we are not yet, uh, to be very honest with you. This is not a, a segment market which we are uh, looking into at this time. Uh, and the companies which move into that space are more uh, larger, larger corporations which acquired brokerage houses and then in, in turn also acquired marinas. Right. Uh, brokerage houses like ours are uh, focused on doing what we do and trying to improve what we do, but none of us or competitors have yet gone into that field. However, yes, some parent companies which owned uh, brokerage houses saw the possible synergies of marinas, brokerage houses, and their own business to actually increase their portfolio of assets and in turn increase their revenue by aligning all these different um, business stream and uh, reinforce the synergies amongst them all. So uh, I see the benefit of doing so, but at our level today, no, this is not on the, on the map. You know, it seems like the champagne bubbles are settling after soaring super yacht sales during the pandemic. Ultra wealthy people who were cooped up in their homes and had money to burn spent it on boat buying spree in 2020 and 2021. But after an extended period of rampant inflation and burdensome borrowing costs weighing heavily on discretionary purchases, sales have sunk back down a little bit. The yacht industry was considered by analysts to be invincible because its customers are too wealthy to be bothered by inconveniences like inflation and recessions. But obviously, that's not the case. I know 2023 was a bit of a challenging year for IYC for both new and used deals. What's your assessment of the market reversal and how has it impacted your business? Well, look, I think you, you said it very well. Um, when come when COVID hit us, uh, we all were like, "All right, so what's going to happen next?" And I mean, the first thing we all did with our respective companies was almost to count the uh, printing paper. You know, where shall we save first? Right. Uh, it was extremely right. stressful, yeah. and then uh, when everything reopened, um, actually, it turned out that the COVID and post-COVID years were probably the best years ever to date uh, for the yachting industry. So. Right. As you outlined, different factors for this matter. You know, one, people just, you know, the carpe diem syndrome. Okay, you know what? I've been locked down. Uh, I want to live my life. Uh, I want to dream my dreams. I want to live my dreams, sorry. So let's go and buy a yacht. So we were at the small yachts, smaller yachts, and thought about, you know, upgrading, said, oh, that is the time. Um, same, you know, on the charter side, a lot of individuals were... You know, I always dreamed to be on the yacht and, and, and they realized that actually at the end of the day, to charter a yacht could be comparable than being in a five or six star hotel or, or go on a cruise line to some extent. So they say, hey, let's, let's charter a yacht because also at that time, cruise lines were, down, were shut down, hotels were shut down, very few destinations were open, but we were able to move yachts and actually welcome customers on board the yacht. So we saw a huge increase of, uh, of customers, uh, both on the sales and the charter front which I kind of, it still remains on the charter front because as we all say, once you try yachting, you stay in yachting. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the charter market is still going very, very strong. Uh, the sales, however, as you rightly said, we saw a slow but sure uh, decline in the, um, in the sales, uh, in the purchase and acquisition um, side of our business, starting from 22. Then we saw it further in 23. Uh, we at IYC had a regular, at a decent year in 23 because, you know, we were able to also uh, do a good number of new builds. Uh, however, when it comes to 24, the first two or three months, uh, we see a big drop uh, versus 23 and 22. When I say a big drop, it's a very big drop. Yeah. Um, and this is where we're keeping a very close eyes on what's next. Um I mean, we are uh, close to a 25% drop um, year on year. And uh, if we compare with uh, the deal which was done in September versus in December 23 versus February, we have a drop of 53%. So we're really keeping an eye on that. So what do you think the, what does the new normal look like? Not, not just for IYC, but the whole entire super yacht market. Look, uh, I think we all benefited from a very strong years. Uh, I would say to some extent, unusual years for our industry. Uh, I think we're going to go, we're going to see a normalization uh, probably this year and next. Going back to the pre-pandemic numbers, which were to some extent extremely good at the time. We all, were all experiencing a growth rate of 
between six and nine percent. So that's really decent. And I do believe that we're going to go back to uh, the pre the pre COVID um, the pre COVID numbers, which again were were fine. However, I think the uh, the interest request uh, for charter will remain very strong, which is a a very good thing for our industry because I. Once you charter, a, a, a quite a good number of charters, uh, while they charter for a few years, it comes to a point and they decide, look, you know, I'd love to have my own yacht. So they will go into the purchase process. Uh, how long this will take, I do not know. Mm -hmm. However, the fact that charter remains strong is, is a positive sign from our industry. Obviously, we're going to normalize the sales market, which is, I think, anyhow due. And then we're going to go back to numbers, which were uh, the 2018, 2017 numbers. Is the market for smaller yachts catching the brunt of this softening market? You know, where people at the lower end are maybe feeling a bit more pain from interest rises and then maybe uh, people who are at the top end who tend to be billionaires rather than multimillionaires? Well, look what we see. Um, the, the bulk of the market, the super yachting, you know, in in our world, what we qualify super yachting, it's over 80 feet, right? right. 80 feet and above. Uh, the average size of a yacht in our industry is about between 85 and 90 feet. This is what sells the most for an average price of seven, seven to eight million. So this is where the market really is. Obviously, you know, because of the influx of new boats coming to the market over the last two years, all these purchases, uh, we've seen an incredible uh, increase of uh, of boats being purchased, and today, reversely, we see a lot of these boats being put on the market. So clearly, it shows that once uh, maybe some people rush into their decision to buy a yacht at the time, and they realize, oh, maybe this is a little too expensive to maintain, a little too expensive to run. I maybe don't need that much of a yacht. So we see more boats coming to the market. And therefore, the impact it has on our industry was priced for very high till, uh, till, till December, November last year. Now we see some price dropping. Uh, and that segment market is very, very slow. However, on the other end, we see the larger yachts, the big, big yachts, so 250 feet and above, when, when a proper, I mean, when a good yacht of this side properly priced, is made available, it goes very fast. So mm -hmm. that tells you that in fact, as you kind of pointed out, the billionaires are still looking to buy super yacht. And therefore, if there's a good opportunity, properly priced, a yacht which is in good condition, they do not stay very long on the market. Yeah. Uh, and this, this we see. Now, what we saw also as a phenomenon, because of that, um, really um, craziness, I would say, into buying yachts at that time, all the prices went up uh, into the second hand market, but also the new build because of course the impact of the inflation, the scarcity of raw material, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of clients bought yachts at a certain price. And obviously if you want to sell your yachts now after two or three years or, or on a ship, you don't want to sell it at loss. So we have had all these boats sitting on the market at a, at a high price, finding no buyers because now right. the buyers, they say, okay, look, we are not in the seller's market anymore. We've turned into buyer's market. So they are waiting. They are sitting on the fence to see where is my next deal. So we see that phenomenon of wait and see for the time being. So this is why also you see a slowdown in the sales. There are still buyers uh, around that probably less than we've seen the last three years, but they, we are still buyers, but they are waiting the, for the opportunity towards before. Obviously, because of the scarcity of the inventory, they were jumping over first opportunity, but that is over. Uh, now they are waiting for the good deal. And obviously people like us in our team, they have to work harder to sell boats. Yeah, so I would think that, you know, if if a buyer has a choice between waiting three or four years for a new one, and paying a really big price or buying whatever exists on the brokerage market, it seems that IYC can keep its prices inflated, no? No, because today, what I said earlier, basically, uh, 
the price of the yachts, which are on the second hand market, are being reduced because there's an influx of products. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's more the, uh, the uh, offer versus the demand. So the potential buyers are really have a large choice. When it comes to the new build, we are at the end of the, um, the, uh, the, the very busy years, which have been spanning from 20 to 23, whereby, you know, customers will go into, into the shipyards and buy their boats. So the, the shipyards are still extremely busy delivering these purchases because, as you said, it takes from three to four years. But from 25, 26 onwards, if they do not um, uh, fill up their booking orders, there's going to be also there some availabilities. And so shipyards are going to be... Uh, probably not as busy as they are today. So there again, you know, we, we potentially see some possible deals with shipyard. If you are ready to wait uh, for three years or four years, there's maybe a room for negotiation with the shipyard. The second end market is what it is. There's more boats for sale than they are uh, potentially uh, customers today. And actually there are more boats coming into market today than they are for sale. So there is a lot of uh, opportunities for, for the buyers and they know it and they wait for it until the best opportunity comes their way. We see every week if there's a properly priced boat, which is made available on the market, they normally find a buyer. Are you seeing the market increasingly leaning towards bigger vessels? Yeah, that's a good question. Look, we've seen a, a lot of uh, bigger yachts eating the water. We still will see. It remains a very small uh, portion of the yachting market. As I said earlier, the average size of a yacht is 85 to 90 feet, right? right. Um, we see an increase of, we've seen an increase, sorry, of large yachts. However, I believe this will reduce uh, going forward for various reasons. First of all, some nationalities which were accustomed to buying larger yachts are not able to buy larger yachts any longer. Hmm. Um, we've seen uh, Middle Eastern who are also accustomed to buy bigger yachts to, to also probably reduce their orders. And last but not least, uh, the American who back five, six years ago were more visible in, um, in the mid-size to mid-size segment to upper end segment. Now we've seen them really going into the bigger yacht segment. Now I'm not convinced that that part of the uh, client uh, will be in fact sufficient to sustain the building of the larger yachts. We still will see some larger yachts being built and being ordered, but uh, I think we're switching from uh, seeing uh, some larger yacht in the waters to going back to mid sides to a little higher uh, yachts being delivered. Also, you have to remember this, this, there's also, especially in Europe, this, this, this image of owning a yacht and uh, being sustainable or not being sustainable is quite impacting a lot of perception, even from the buyer, then uh, we are not necessarily very keen on being seen on a larger yacht. Yeah. You know, and traditionally, super yacht buyers have been billionaires and multimillionaires, almost 100% male, who sell their business in their mid 60s and want some high end downtime with family and friends. But now the trend is younger with younger families who have experienced a big liquidity event, if you will. Mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. you talk about the changing face of today's super yacht buyers? This is very true. The, this we've seen um, for the last four years. I mean, we, we had an average uh, age of our clientele was about. 55 to 60 mm -hmm. and to some extent uh, a little older now we're down to 45 to 50 so we saw and i'm talking throughout uh, sales and purchase as well as charter so we definitely saw an influx of a younger clientele uh, coming to this industry one of the reasons being obviously the um the what we've seen during covid so many people come into your team because of the opportunities which open to them versus the other area which were closed and they came and they loved it. We also saw obviously uh, a lot of younger uh, individuals uh, becoming, uh, um, getting the means to come into your team 
due to the uh, stock market uh, being extremely um, performing. Also, the um, cryptocurrencies, yep. as well as some companies which have been extremely uh, profitable over the uh, COVID uh, crisis. So we have had an influx of new money and new yacht men and ladies, which indeed uh, has been um, very uh, positive for the yachting industry. Now, we also see there that they are very uh, keen to, to take some steps which are a little new for industry in such as design of the yacht, um, destination of the yachts, um, approach on how they build their yachts. So we, 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 we've seen that uh, influx of uh, new customers, younger customers, uh, new ideas uh, coming into our industry, which has been really, really refreshing. Yeah. Not to mention, of course, the existing customers who, who also have been uh, um, wanted to to change the existing yards so or also trying to explore new destinations uh, whilst uh, uh, going through the pandemic. We've seen a lot of individuals buying a yacht at the time just to travel the world. Uh, you know, we've all been through the remote work um, changes, and that also affected uh, our, our clientele, uh, who suddenly experimented the fact that they could run their companies and their business whilst being elsewhere in the world. Uh, we have had stories where, you know, some, some of our uh, clients decided to buy a yacht and tour the world together with the kids um, and, and run at the same time their business. We've seen yachts being built with uh, new amenities and layout, which we didn't see before, including office, uh, PS office, the full on, um, you know, IT and digital tools. I mean, one of the first questions we will get uh, is how is the IT? How can I get, uh, you know, my uh, my meetings organized, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, we, we've seen a shift, um, which which remains. Uh, this has not changed. I mean, uh, I mean, like like all of us, you know, the fact that you can work from home, then then we can work from home, uh, and it's kind of now sunk in everybody's uh, mind also applies for these uh, very talented individuals who are uh, able to run their businesses while they travel the world, you know? Well, boat shows are in full swing now. I know you just wrapped up uh, Palm Beach International Boat Show and the Dubai International Boat Show was, I don't mm -hmm. know, a month or so ago. Miami International yes. Boat Show was right before that. Did IYC have many yachts to view around these shows? And what were some of the big themes, the overall themes that you took away from the shows? Well, so I was myself uh, attending the, uh, I didn't attend Dubai, um, I'm sorry, Miami this year. Uh, Miami is a, is a very, is a very peculiar show. For some reason, it struggles to take off. Um, mm. Whilst it is in a very, very dynamic, uh, rich city, Miami, yeah. I mean, is one of the fastest growing, I think, probably city in America today, uh, with an influx of wealth. Uh, however, the boat show struggles to take off and not many not all brokerage houses are actually participating to that boat show. We had a couple of boats, but not many. Uh, I think it has to do with the layout and, and various reasons. So the show was, was fine, but uh, for us, it, it, it was not one of the main shows. Uh, the mood was good from what I've heard, and, uh, and obviously um, so, so attended. Now, Dubai was very interesting. I was in Dubai, as a matter of fact, as we just opened an office there. We had no display uh, in Dubai. However, you saw uh, uh, the mood in Dubai is very active. I mean, you have all this influx of uh, various nationalities just moving to Dubai and uh, a lot of boats actually moving to Dubai. So, of course, the number of boats you see there are, are uh, mid-size. Uh, unfortunately, yet there's not much where to go out of Dubai beside a few very, very small itineraries. So the Dubai in itself is not really a yachting destination as per se. However, you can really feel there is a, a very strong uh, mood for boatings, uh, for yacht ownership in Dubai. And uh, I think the, the work which is being done today from their neighbors, to some extent the, uh, the, Saudi, uh, the Saudis uh, trying to build uh, a yachting destination um, might be an alternative for the region going forward, as long as uh, obviously uh, 
the uh, current conflicts cease soon enough uh, to allow um, a proper traffic of yachts, we, I do believe that this region will effectively become um, one alternative to the traditional yachting regions, such as obviously uh, the Caribbean in winters and the Mediterranean in summer. Uh, the, the, this, this area may become an alternative to the Caribbean in the winter season. Um, and, and you can feel that, that, you know, that buzz in, in Dubai, yeah. uh, whereby you have all these, uh, nationalities mixing and, uh, and, uh, and obviously a uh, lots of wealth coming into Dubai. So that I believe will be, um, soon, uh, another yachting hub, uh, for our industry. What were some of the big themes of the ones that you attended? Was it about, you know, greater appeal to younger generation of yacht owners? Was it, you know, was there a focus on environment and green energy or high-end marine living? What were some of the couple of the big themes that you saw? So there is obviously now uh, sustainability and um, it is a big item uh, for our industry. Obviously, this is something which the shipyards are working very hard uh to to make uh, the yachts more sustainable than what they are today as we all know you know a yacht is unlikely to be one day uh entirely green until we find the the the, the right uh, technology and 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 between the owners to be or the existing owners who are extremely uh, conscious about the the environment together with the arts there's a lot of work being done for alternative uh, methods of propulsion, such as hybrid, uh, electric. Now we're also looking at uh, uh, hydrogen. So that's always, in all the shows, something which is uh, on, on the top of the agenda uh, through various conferences or, or new builds which are uh, displayed. Then, of course, comes the, uh, the new design of the yacht. We saw, we saw a shift on the, on the way the interiors are being designed. You know, now it's... it's, it's you see less and less, you know, a very heavy interior. Uh, obviously, it depends on the ownership. But uh, from the one I've seen recently, we're looking more at open spaces, larger windows, uh, light uh, colors, environment, which is something we, uh, we, we, we see more and more. So you have a lot of discussion around this design and, and the layout of the yards, uh, the propulsion being, as I said earlier, one of the main items for the reason we all know. And and yes, there's that desire to uh, to to come up with uh, with layout and design which are maybe closer to designs, home designs, but in a way that it is a, a bit maybe a bit more neutral to some extent. Right. Uh, and and bigger open space, uh, bigger maybe family rooms. Uh, you see an increase of gyms, uh, a spa. So there, there's a lot of work on that, and uh, we saw a shift into that uh, that trend, which is of course uh, part of the you know um, the design work the the yard are all doing. Yeah, I, I, that's what I was going. I was going to say that you know we've seen a lot of outrageously designed yachts relying heavily on contemporary embellishments, but has the succession fueled quiet luxury phenomenon hit the super yacht market yet, where the rich are being stealthier? about their riches? Are you seeing designs that put less emphasis on ostentation and take a more traditional approach, customizing vessels to suit the taste and enthusiasm of owners and their families? You know, things like solar panels, wind turbines, or hybrid propulsion systems, just, you know, a little more stealthy. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, definitely. Uh, as I said earlier, you know, you 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 see a different approach in the uh, in the layout uh, of the yachts, in the in the desire of having neutral colors. Uh, I mean, for for many, I'm not saying all of them. You will always find yachts which are, uh, you know, uh, tailor made to the taste of an owner, which is still, you know, heavy, uh, maybe uh, precious metals and all of this. But this is something we see less and less now. Indeed, we. We see uh, a lot of owners who are extremely conscientious about the environment and trying to find solutions for their proportion, but also the way they handle their conditioning on board. And we see some yachts, but that would be more on the sailing front with uh, especially catamaran, whereby we see now yachts with solar panels being utilized. You don't see that very often yet on super yachts, traditional white hull super yachts. 
but you, you start to see it on a, a alternative yards such as large catamaran uh, or the like. And uh, going back to the design, for sure, I mean, most of the yards today, you will find larger windows, balconies, um, larger spa, big beach club, which uh, you did not necessarily find uh, back 10 to 10 to 15 years ago. You know, there's a strong desire for most of the nationalities to to turn the yachts toward the exterior, the outdoors, than it is toward the indoors. And that it comes obviously with the fact that you have a, probably a younger clientele, and also one of the one of the reasons. It's, which could explain that uh, that shift is also the desire of when you wish to have your boat made uh, available to the charter uh, market, then you need to be a little more neutral and also turn towards the outdoor and the toys. As we all know, during the pandemic, uh, the yards became the destination. So people, of course, they always want to explore new countries and areas, but they also find the yard being their final destination whereby they want to find all the services and uh, and tools which will allow them to have a great time so we see that shift uh and that that i think that's even more to come we have a new design extremely innovative in terms of the layout uh, on on board and within the boat with um, with higher headways and uh, and uh it, it, this is this is interesting yeah, I was reading one of the latest trends IYC highlights is the integration of wellness and fitness facilities on the super yachts, things like onboard fitness centers equipped with state of the art exercise equipment, spa facilities, meditation rooms and yoga decks and things like that. Is this a consequence of owners, perhaps older ones, searching for more and different ways to spend time at sea? Well, I think uh, overall, we see that trend in the world where, uh, you know, we all are becoming more conscious about you know um, health and uh, good food habits and uh, and meditation and yoga and uh, and sports and uh, and of course that affects everyone you know whether you are a billionaire millionaire or or, or, or regular person I believe you have that uh, that approach to life which uh, um, you know sport meditation health. Uh, are, are very important. So, of course, now it takes uh, it takes a, quite an important uh, a part of a, of a yacht uh, building uh, process thinking. So, not only the fitness center, but also you know, a large room for yoga or or a, a nice beach club where you have. Uh, I mean, I was the other day uh, discussing with an owner. I mean, he, he would like to have a juice bar. By his uh, <laughs> by his beach club, you know, a juice bar with a, you know, real full on juice bar. So, you see that obviously not only it goes through the technology and the amenities you put on your yard, such as you know, full on fitness center with all with all the machines and, uh, but also the crew you hire. You know, it, it's more and more we 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 have requests to find a, a yoga instructor, a fitness instructor uh, all around. Uh, who is able to to teach you and guide you through the the fitness um, fitness uh, training, uh, including boxing, uh, all these kind of things. So now there's definitely uh, an increase uh, on that front. There again, you know, because also we have a, a younger uh, younger yacht owners today. Um, we also see an increase of that desire to have uh, this facility on board. Not to say that uh, the older generation is not keen to do that, because we also see that. Uh, whereby um, all the clients, they're also now very keen on taking care of themselves. And uh, that goes with food, that goes with fitness, uh, that goes with uh, all around uh, health and, uh, and fitness. Yes, there's definitely something which is important. Data has been a major factor in the success of many companies across all industries. And I'm sure IYC captures a lot of first party data on its customers and the market. Does IYC have an intelligence team devoted to data analytics and surfing insights for your brokers to have the most accurate and acute information to help win more business? Absolutely. Uh, we have a, what we call an intelligence team. I don't know if it's the right word, <laughs> but uh, they are intelligent. Though. They're an intelligent team. Right. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, they gather data and they obviously, yes put it all in a report which we share uh, monthly with our uh, with our team 
to give them pointers, uh, but they were, we also share this with our client base. So we also, it also provide them with an understanding of where the market is going, where the charter market is, uh, is strong, uh, the level of business, which currently happening. So all of this, yes, we gather. So we gather not only through our people, but, uh, we also have our own, uh, IT tech company, which is, uh, part of the IYC group. And obviously, we also use in the new technologies such as AI and, and the likes to uh, gather data and uh, filter it. So it being made available through reports and Intel, which we share with um, all, all stakeholders. So, yes, we, we, we do a lot on that front uh, in order to be, you know, at the forefront of, of the industry with the latest uh, data available. So all the news which are also shared by the shipyards. Um, you know, the new uh, building coming out, the potential uh, uh, yards being made available, uh, you know, every, everything which basically relates to the auto industry is yes, we do take a lot of, uh, we do make a lot of efforts on that front to be, uh, to be efficient and allow our team to be uh, knowledgeable enough when they not only deal with customers, but also for their own sake. IYC has built strategic partnerships with a number of brands catering to the ultra high net worth customers spanning across the luxury travel, hospitality, and leisure sectors to ensure your clients experience an end-to-end -end service throughout the journey. Do you see these collaborative partnerships outside of your core business as a key component in your growth strategies? I do believe so. Um... I am a very, very fond of partnerships. Now, obviously, you have partnerships and partnerships. Right. <laughs> we need to, we need to ensure that uh, these partners are uh, very worth the uh, tri net worth individual world. Obviously, I see partnership as a. I like to I like to use the word as a as a space uh, where we cross contaminate each other, meaning. You know, we bring clients, they bring clients, we get to meet each other and we, 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 we basically offer the, op the possibility to our clients to be exposed to this brand and vice versa. So it allows every party to, uh, to not only benefit from each, other, each other's clientele, but also offer our own clientele experiences uh, through our, these partners uh, to level up our brand. Uh, uh, in itself, but also uh, provide the other brand the opportunity to level themselves themselves up into the sphere whereby basically you know the clientele we are fortunate to be dealing with is is the top of the top and uh, and um, you know their taste uh, their uh, their their love for experiences uh, their love for food for uh, private transportations um, is always an opportunity to. To introduce companies which are able to to provide such bespoke services so yes it, it's definitely a key component of our strategy to ensure that we have the right partners to to provide our customers with alternatives to the services they use today and uh, it also allows us to uh, strengthen strengthen our brand uh, to their eyes whereby you know we are seen dealing with uh, with strong brands out there and uh, i think this is very important yes in addition to sales skills, selling large luxury yachts demands professional expertise, in-depth understanding of the industry, market trends and regulations and things like that. So in light of this new digital era where clients are much more informed on a yacht before they even reach out to you, a surge of yachting influencers on social media and an ever-changing industry, how has the role of a yacht broker evolved? That's a very, very good question. Uh, thank you for asking, uh, Scott. Look, a yacht broker is is key. Uh, he should not only be seen as a salesman. A very good broker should be knowledgeable, ethical, and, and of a good counsel. Um, there are so many boats and yachts available out there. So the data which we provide, the the information they are able to gather uh, through the market gives them a good understanding of where the market is, what the inventory has to offer. But not only the fact that you're also discussing with shipyards, exposing our workforce and our talents to um, a conference with a designer, uh, with a naval architect, with um, 
one a finance advisor allows them as well to have all this knowledge to some level, which will provide them enough substance to discuss with our customers who are, as I said earlier, you know, extremely uh, experienced, intelligent. They have access to all these tools themselves. So most of the time, uh, they know a lot more than uh, some of us. And therefore, you know, they, they are not the ones you can just, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, yeah, <laughs> right. Them, you really have to be on top of your game. Tell them the tell them the BS. You know, so you got to be on top of your game, and uh, and 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 you know, for most of these clients, they see through you. If they if they if they see you actually don't know what you're talking about, you don't. They're not going to deal with you. Uh, so you got to know what you're talking about. You got to know what they want. You need to understand what they want. You know. If someone comes to you and say, look, I want a boat, I want a big boat uh, with this, with that, with this. But after talking with them and taking, taking them through the, uh, the step, you realize that, in fact, this is not what they need. They need maybe something smaller or something different. You are the one to explain to them, no, this is maybe what you need for A, B, C, D reasons. And, and I think the more you know, the more you can guide customers. And uh, for me, this is where your broker is efficient. We're not here just to sell you a boat. We're here to guide you and explain to you why this is the best option for you. And, uh, and, and I think this is very important for, for, uh, for your broker to have this knowledge all around so he can provide you with the right background and the right direction. And that's even more so true when you actually want to buy a yacht, uh, sorry, build the yacht. You know, there are so many shipyards. So where shall I go? What shall I build? What do I want? What is my budget? What I'm going to do with my yacht? All of this needs to be answered carefully and it's not a matter of just selling you the yacht. I'm not interested. I want to sell you the right yacht. And the more you know, the more you can guide your customers. I want to talk about some of the interesting business models that are out there when it comes to the uh, super yacht industry. And we're seeing fractional ownership models have been gaining traction in both private jet and luxury vacation property spheres for a while. Now the super yacht sector is opening its doors to new owners through fractional ownership. More startups are entering the market, offering the opportunity for multiple co-owners to share a super yacht temporarily and financially. Do you see the trend becoming a bigger threat to your business? Many, many have tried the, um, the fractional ownership in your team. We see some, um, some momentum in some sort with the smaller segment of our industry, uh, 80 feet, 85 feet, it doesn't yet uh, take, a, take off with the larger yachts for the simple reason that most of uh, these individuals, they are not necessarily ready to share their yachts uh, and they want their own yachts. And also the complexity of fractional ownership is also the availability of your yacht. As we all know, uh, these individuals like, they have, like many of us, they have a very busy agenda and therefore, you know, uh, Pretty much everyone wants to use the yacht at the same time. Right. Holidays, long weekend, so it's 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 always complicated uh, on the larger scale to have many many fractional ownership. You have some, obviously, you know it does exist, and uh, we see a, a small increase into that uh, into that business model. Lower end of the segment in terms of size. Uh, very often, uh, it's an investment. Uh, decision rather than uh, a desire to vacationing uh, regularly on a yacht. But uh, I don't see it becoming uh, a huge trend in, uh, in our world uh, because of the reason I mentioned earlier. I've been going through and discussing with, uh, with owners who tried this before, yeah. uh, with friends, and it never ended very well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or very rarely. Uh, so... It's, it's, it's a good opportunity for some to maybe, you know, try out your thing. I think that's, that's definitely positive because they may not have the, uh, the bandwidth to have their own yacht or, or run their own yacht. And therefore being able to try your thing in that, in that way, it's not a bad thing at all. And uh, why not? But uh, to have it on a larger scale with uh, uh, more and more yachts going towards the direction, I personally have some doubts. You will see an increase, but that will be, that will be always uh, on a smaller scale, to my point of view. Last year, fashion designer Giorgio Armani announced it would collaborate with the Italian Sea Group on a series of two custom super yacht projects 
We've already seen luxury fashion houses entering the hospitality and branded residence space. Do you think we'll see more fashion designers taking on super yacht projects? Well, look, yes. I mean, the as a matter of fact, the Omani project is one uh, is a set of three yachts we sold at IYC. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm familiar with the um, with the with the with the subject. So I mean, here obviously there was a Italian uh, sea group. Um, you know, as a as a way to to make it extremely enticing, uh, I think brought in the concept of having uh, Armani as a designer, which I think was very exciting. Yeah, and obviously uh, he accepted, and himself is very much involved uh, directly. So that's definitely um, I think a first to that extent in the industry. I do believe that you may see this more often, uh, indeed. Uh, going forward, whereby uh, luxury fashion houses will get involved with interior design. This is a first. I'm pretty sure that it'll bring more to, to try out. Uh, there are projects out there happening. And um, I think, yes, you will see probably more more brand names on uh, an interior design projects. Uh, I don't see it being uh, uh, the only one doing so. Of yeah. Obviously, future will tell us, but I do I do see some cooperation uh, probably in the near future. Yes. So let's think about looking ahead with IYC. How are you hoping to grow your business moving forward? I know you that's want the market good... to turn around. And yeah, that's one thing. But... <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean we are we are watching very carefully uh, the market, as you rightly pointed out. However, you know, obviously um, we are uh, very good to. Uh, to develop further, I mean, IYC in its current uh, format and shareholding structure is the fastest growing company in Newting. I mean, uh, the current shareholder purchased IYC in 2016, yeah, and the growth has been tremendous. And you just made some uh, acquisitions the... recently, correct? Yes, we've acquired uh, some operators in uh, the yacht, ma yacht management field, but also charter management, and uh, and uh, we are definitely uh, on the lookout for more. Obviously, um, economics will dictate our next move. Uh, but, uh, you know, we want to grow. We have a very clear roadmap on, uh, for the next five years on where we want to be, uh, on what we want to be doing then. And clearly, you know, whilst organically is always uh, something which we will nonetheless do, it, of course, goes through acquisition to, uh, to achieve that uh, roadmap. And uh, we are definitely looking for... Uh, you know, brokerage houses, sales, uh, yacht management, possibly charter management. So this is definitely something we're studying uh, on, on, a, on, a, on a monthly basis. So, Raphael, my final question is the luxury item question, which I ask all my guests. So if you were stranded on a deserted island and you can only have one single luxury item with you, what would that luxury item be? It can't be any form of air or water transportation, so you can't call anybody on your team with a boat to pick you up on the island. It's just, <laughs> you know, you can't have any anything that requires mobile service. It's just you by yourself on this lonely island with lots of ocean around you, but you had one single luxury item with you. What would that be? Huh. You know, that's a tough question. I mean, between two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I look, I'll give you the two and I'll give you my final one. Okay, so give me two I, and then we'll cut it back get, to one. I'll, I'll cut back to one. So luxury item, I mean, I, I love music, right? Uh, I wake up, I put the music on, I go to bed, I put music on. So I, I, I need a very good music device. <laughs> okay, one that you've downloaded it, already. Yeah, and one, um, the other one is I'm, very, I'm a very keen sportsman. Uh, mm -hmm. so it all depends how big the island is, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if it's a very, very small island, I would need, uh, you know, one of these, uh, very new and fancy, uh, self, uh, self, uh, walking uh, treadmill. <laughs> so I can do my exercise. <laughs> you run forever. Come on forever. And then I'll take the trouble away by being isolated on the island. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So pick one. Uh, I'll go for the treadmill. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> Rafael Solo, Chief Executive Officer of IYC Yachts. Thank you so much for joining me on The Luxury Item. Thank you so much, Scott. It was a pleasure to be with you. That's it for this episode of The Luxury Item Podcast. 
Thank you so much for listening. If you found this useful and entertaining, I would be really grateful if you can share it with a friend or colleague. I would love it if you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, be sure to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps other listeners find us. The Luxury Item Podcast is a production of Silvertone Consulting. I'm your host, Scott Kerr. Until next time.